Okay, hi there guys. I received a question uh, from someone asking about installing um, an application that is using a database server. Okay, and um, before I answer the question, I thought maybe I should explain a few things uh, because uh, I don't believe I explained uh, what a database instance is, what, uh, what are the database tools and how they differ, differ from database management system and stuff like that. So maybe uh, I think the understanding of this is very important uh, for uh, beginners in case in case they don't know but I, I hope everyone knows about them and uh, I will explain how to install the application so let's start with this so the things uh, that you you must know is uh, what a database is and this is uh, usually very straightforward uh, forward and uh, usually the database represent the files uh, that uh, uh, your information is stored inside. For example, the success file is uh, the actual database. Now, uh, also, I have this. Uh, uh, this is a post degree SQL database. But this is not the database itself. The database itself is in this folder. It's inside the data the data folder. So um, you can see uh, the the files over here represent the data. Okay. Uh, these files uh, I believe represent the data okay maybe I'm not very accurate about that but um, I suppose so okay so um, yeah so let's go back to what we have written here so this is the database now the same thing is true for uh, Oracle database for SQL server they are all the same uh, when you say database, it means the physical medium, in this case, the f uh, or the physical files. Uh, it's not always files, because sometimes you have a file system uh, specific for the database, so basically it's like uh, the partition, uh, okay? But think about it like now, like physical files, and this uh, should address uh, your questions. Now, the second thing here we have is the database management system and the database management system is the piece of software that knows how to access the database okay because not any program could access the database files right away it, it has special formats so the database management system will know how to access that and um, usually um, uh, <coughs> uh, not usually. Uh, each database has its own database management system. So uh, that's why you have Oracle database, you have SQL database, you have Access, you have uh, uh, PostgreSQL, etc. Okay. So um, another thing that we have, which is important, uh, uh, is the database instance, and. Uh, we said that the database is a collection of physical files, right? So a database instance is actually what? It's uh, the database. Now, what's the difference between this and this? Well, uh, they are the same. But to give you an idea, uh, they are almost the same. But, what to, uh, but sometimes uh, you hear the term instance. It means there is a database installed on your system. Okay? So, for example, on my computer, okay, I have uh, one Postgres database instance. I have multiple instances of Access databases, okay, and I have two instances of SQL Server database, okay. So, a database instance is a physical database. Now, you might be asking why they use this term. Well, I'm not sure, but. Uh, Basically, you could have a database server, and this server has multiple instances. Okay, so you might want to know which instance you are accessing uh, using your program. Okay, and uh, the last thing you need to know is the database tool, and the database tool is used to. Uh, is it's uh, many people would think it's the same as the database management system or it's the same as database, it is not. Let me show you an example here. 
Now this is what this is our access file. If I double click on that, I get uh, access will open the file. Well, access is not the database. It is not the database management system, but it is a tool, a very nice graphical user interface that's being used to access that file. If you go to, for example, this, this is called PG Admin. It's also another tool that is being used in order to access uh, Postgres database, okay? And make it easier to manage it. If you go uh, to a SQL server, you have something called uh, SQL Management Studio, okay? And uh, its job is to connect to a SQL server uh, instances and uh, makes it easier for you to manage okay so all these are management tools all these are management tools which makes dealing with the database and managing it much easier okay if you don't have these tools you will have to work with the command line all the time which might be a little bit difficult for a beginner okay so um, now we have these uh, we, we know what are these let's consider uh, the case when you want uh, to install your application <clears throat> so after we made this distinction uh, one of the things that many don't realize that when we are connecting to the database uh, the data since the database separate from our application we can actually put the database on another machine uh, for access uh, <coughs> For access, uh, usually uh, the connection is direct, okay. But for, for example, Postgres or uh, SQL Server or Oracle, you are using uh, a network connectivity. You are providing the IP address of the computer. Maybe it's the same computer. Maybe it's a different one, and you are accessing the database, uh, maybe from another machine, okay. So the question now is what happens when you want to install your program after you finish its development well if you think about it the, uh, this is this represent the database this this might be on the same computer or might be on a different one so the first step you need is to install here the database software okay uh, or in other words the database management system and second you need to install the database instance okay usually these two steps are done together in a single step because the wizard will do that for you right away okay after you finish that uh, you will have to create the tables because the wizard will create the instance but it will know it doesn't know about what kind of tables you need uh, uh, sorry what kind of tables your program needs in order to run appropriately so you need to execute a number of secrets now uh, the question I got is about how to install these secrets okay so I will address that later now after you install the database sorry you will go and install the application on one or multiple machines this might happen on the same machine or might happen on different machines and later on you will need to tell these computers that the database is located on this machine so let's go and and uh, talk about executing the script our problem we are uh, that we need to focus on right now is after you install the database and after you install the database instance here how do you uh, create the tables so usually usually uh, well I think you have seen that previously um, I was able to connect to uh, the databases using the designer within Visual Studio okay this is a very straightforward process no, uh, no problem here right so um, well let's say we finished developing our application and now you want to, you want to know how you could create the database on uh, sorry you, how do you copy the database so we have this management studio and we have this table okay uh, we have this table so if in uh, SQL server management studio you could just right click here okay and uh, you could go and select the uh, script table as and create 
and uh, select this one new query editor window and what this is gonna do for you it's going to create the data definition language for your uh, let's say uh, table okay when uh, by data definition I mean the SQL statements needed to create the exact same data on another database the same version by the way okay so uh, let me close this one here and we could actually go and uh, let me see did I create something here no okay no problem so let's let me go to the master here and uh, let's go to tasks uh, there is you could do something like I believe you could back up this database and restore it on another machine okay um, this way you will be able to uh, <coughs> I'm not sure if this works but I think it will w uh, it will allow you to copy all the information no problem with that okay so let, let's go back to this one and try to, to check a few things um, let me where is show table data yeah so here okay so I'm, I'm gonna create um, I'm gonna insert something here so insert into this one values okay so I need to provide what mm, ID 1 followed by name Smith for example semicolon and uh, I will execute that and I'm gonna say select star from that table select star from this table and I will execute and I have the information here so uh, let's hope that uh, wait a second I'm not sure if this will commit right away so just in case I will commit the changes I don't want anything to go away then then yeah okay so I think uh, it auto commits anyway so right to click here now um, script table as and create to and let's have a look here so this is only the data definition for some reason I thought it's gonna create uh, the row for me okay um, well so the thing that you could do also here is the following you could in case uh, you want to you could just add insert into uh, the table name sphere dot names okay um, wait a second like this for example values and let's say this is the initialization formation for the database so you could put this one like this okay so um, in my case I'm gonna delete this table uh, where is the drop delete this is delete and I'm gonna say okay and it's gone so now uh, you go to the other database and you open a sheet and you put this text in it okay and basically what should work I never tried this on the SQL server but you just uh, you just say execute and uh, you could just now refresh this one you will find the table and you could just say select top rows and you will find the information here okay so um, this is the technique I use when I I create uh, a database so what 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 I do in my project while I am creating these tables okay I I will uh, hmm, I will create an additional file so for example this is a new project let me just show you this in a second um, let's say that this is a project for example okay nice and now I will add a simple file usually this is a text file um, this is a new item okay and general text file usually I will call it script 
and add it okay so what I do is that after I create the table I will just copy this text and put it here okay it's very simple and let's say later on later on <coughs> I want to create another table let's say a, a new table um, let's say this is ID um, let's say oh maybe something different and text whatever that is ABC okay and the F okay so we have this table and uh, I'm gonna save this yes I'm gonna call it TT for some reason I don't know why but anyway so right to click again script cre create table into this guy so again I will copy this one I'll put it here okay so now we have these two in this file okay now I'm gonna delete this go and I'm gonna delete the second go there you go so <clears throat> now let's say that you finished your application and when you finish your application you will have this text file that contains the script that will generate the tables for you okay so what you need to do is take this text file or let's uh, uh, well you call it a script file just copy this go to your uh, SQL server management studio select a new query put the text in there or maybe open it from file, men uh, file menu and execute and basically you, we will refresh in here sorry refresh and you see the two tables right away no problem and we when we want to display the information there you go and here the same okay so this is in the case of uh, SQL management studio in the case of Postgres I do something very similar in this case I open this one and also I paste the script right here and uh, execute okay so um, <clears throat> um, I don't know maybe I will show you an example here um, maybe this one um, just wait a second this is one of the projects that I've, I've been working on you see here this is the file called schema okay and uh, you can see that this is a very big script here okay so you can see this is a very big script so all I have to do I just copy this one okay and go and paste it in here okay and then I just execute it I won't execute this because I have some test data I don't want all that data to go away and the same technique works in uh, uh, works with Oracle database okay so is are there easier thing uh, easier techniques to do I'm not sure maybe there are once I created an application that will load this file connect to the database and create the schema for you right away but I prefer this method because you could identify uh, any kind of error that you might have in your work okay so um, I hope this answers uh, your question uh, so basically uh, you just put within the instruction of installation you provide the script file and the script file should have all the data defini definition language commands and all the initialization information such as insert updates and stuff like that uh, contained within you just execute that file using the database management tool and your database will be ready to be accessed and later on when you run this one when, when you run uh, your application you will need just to uh, up, uh, update the the connection path either use uh, at runtime or at s some other moment okay so let me show you this uh, also quickly because uh, I think it will be important so I'm gonna say let's try to add a new connection here change that 
I will use SQL Server. Okay. Notice that I won't use the database file. I will use SQL Server because I want to connect to the instance, not, not the file. So click here. I am gonna open this. <coughs> my friend <coughs> I'm sorry <coughs> okay my computer is very slow okay and finally this is this is SQL Express 2008 okay so if you want to use Windows authentication this will work if the database is on the same machine or if you are yeah if you know the username and uh, the password of the uh, server but this is usually not the case so uh, in that case uh, in such uh, situations you need to work to use the use SQL authentication okay so um, I will test the connection test is successful I'm gonna say okay and uh, yeah and now I have access to this so you can see this is names and this is TT so now I'm gonna right click here and uh, I need to add a new project add the new item uh, let's go to data this is data set I'm gonna add okay and this is come on oops this is data set right so I will drag and drop names here okay so now um, I'm gonna build the solution I didn't display anything I didn't do anything but usually when you do that you see this app.config if you double click on that uh, usually this file contains information about the database so in this case you can see that the connection string is here you must make the connection string point to where your server is since I'm using Windows authentication here this is a connection string is very simple but if, you are, if the server is located on a network that will be a different story you'll have to provide the IPs and stuff like that so you just need to update the connection string accordingly uh, after you install the application either manually or make the application aware and ask for the connection string uh, after it's, it's being installed so um, I hope this will give you a basic idea about how you install the database uh, uh, on uh, uh, for a production environment uh, how you can manage the scripts and stuff like that and um, if you have questions, uh, send them to uh, notes at mkasoft.com. Um, and uh, hope you'll find this useful. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye-bye.